This is Twit. It's time for our rocket man, Rod Pyle, space engineer. He is uh, he has worked at JPL. He's currently working at JPL. He's the author of Space 2.0, many great books about space. He's the editor in chief of Ad Astra magazine at space.nss.org. But really, the best thing he does is this thing every week. He joins us. Hi, Rod, to talk about Hello. space. Good to see you. Nice to see you. So, before we yeah. get to the real story, which is the James right. Webb Telescope. The Chinese rover, this was almost a month ago now, saw yeah. a square-shaped object Thing. on the dark side of the moon. It looked like it could only be made by intelligent life. What was it? Well, the intelligent life up there, according to the Chinese, is the jade rabbit and the moon <laughs> goddess Chang Yi. But actually, it drove over there yeah, all it did. The 260 feet. Yeah. And it's a rock. Oh. And it's not a very interesting rock. It's not and even I very square, to be honest. No, and it's not that big. You know, I, it, nobody, I looked and looked. I can't find a, a, a measurement of it tallied anywhere, but it looks to be maybe 18 inches, just gauging from what the soil looks like there, but it's hard to tell. So somebody looked at that and said, okay, we're going to name that Jade Rabbit because it looks like a rabbit eating carrots. No, it does not. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> so, you know, these are the same way we get faces on Mars and Sasquatch on the moon and that kind of stuff. But okay, you know, but, you know, interestingly. So it's not, it's far this, from what the Chinese called it, which was the mystery hut. The mystery hut. It's just a rock. Well, and, and that points to another thing, which is. It, you know, this unlike NASA, they've kind of been doing a fair amount of clickbait. They have a big public relations operation that sends to Instagram and Facebook, both of which are banned in China, by the way, to try and get traction in the West with oh, these clickbaity hysterical. titles about, oh, we found a gel like substance, which turned out to be melted glass and other things. So, you know, but to their credit, this rover has gone about three times as long as the last, the Soviet lunar rovers. So, you know, they're doing some That's good fine. work. They just need to tone down the That's fine. The nature of it. You a bit. two yeah. just found a space rabbit, not a space hut. But yeah, that there even... is some real science being done and some very mm -hmm. ex science, exciting science. The James Webb telescope now oh has now they say fully deployed. What does that mean? Means that everything that needs to fold and latch has apparently folded and latched. Now I had thought that there was going to be a longer latching sequence for these mirrors. They deployed the second. It, you saw, I'm sure, the graphic of the, the mirrors folding out. So it's got a center chunk, and then the last two panels on the sides have to fold out to make it that roughly circular shape. So they folded out yesterday, the last one, and apparently has latched or is latching. So And these numbers keep changing. It's interesting. You know, you read the press releases, and depending on where it's from, whether it's NASA or Northrop Grumman who made the thing, or another NASA one, the number of deployments and single points of failure keep changing. The last one I read, which is from, from Grumman, so it's probably Northrop Grumman, so it's probably, you know, you, I think you can count on it. 50 major deployments, 178 major release mechanisms, and 344 single points of failure. Wow. You know, whether it's a few more or a few less doesn't matter. It's pretty scary. But, you know, I think the one that everybody was really scared of was that sun shield because it alone had a hundred. You're going to love this. 140 release mechanisms, 70 hinges, 400 pulleys, 90 cables and eight. Hooks. It's a Rube Goldberg and device, but it works. It is. And, you know, and, and we worry about is our software going to work? I, I mean, know. talk about going back to the electromechanical age. But, but they've been working they on this 20 it. years. And yeah. obviously did as much testing as they could. You can't test in zero gravity, but they did the best That's they the problem. could. problem. And, and, you know, they've been working on the project 20 years, really working on that thing for about eight, so seven or eight. So it's amazing. It, I just, it blows quite, me away. Yeah. It blows well, me away. Well, and it's just, you know, I'm practically quivering when I hear this news. I can't imagine how they feel because, of course, they've been on pins and needles for months and yeah. months and months. Yeah, You can only hold so, your breath um, for so many months before you start to get turned blue. Yeah. So, so it's about 75% of the way out to its final orbital location at L2. That's about 674,000 miles from Earth, 225,000 to go, roughly. Hot sides, 131 Fahrenheit. Cold sides, minus 278. Once it gets out to that orbital location, it's still got months of calibration to do. And that's a little scary because things can still go wrong. Well, we remember like the Hubble major. where when they calibrated it, it turned out to be blurry. 
Yeah, but you can bet they double checked the focus <laughs> on this guy. Okay. Yeah. I remember reading an interview with that poor guy who was in charge oh. of the optic for the Hubble. Oh. And he said, you know, it's just the skip we didn't do because of money. Oh. And they discovered that it wasn't in oh. focus. But the that difference is fix. the this Hubble was fix. in an orbit you could go to, which right. they did, and fix. Right. You're not going to fly out to Lagrange too, too often. It would be tough. You know, there's been talk about the possibility of a robotic servicing mission. Yeah. There's been some speculation about, you know, could SpaceX reach it if they had to? Yeah, but it's a dangerous place to go. It's a long And you're not going to say humans. It really is. It's almost well, a million miles probably out. Probably not. It is, but, you know, this isn't much scarier than the asteroid uh, rendezvous they were going to do back during the Obama administration, right. which got canceled. But it's a similar kind of a journey. But it's got to go out, go out there, calibrate, cool down you know, get to its final chill. Most of it's passive, but they do have some cryo coolers. And there are some components that need to be down like minus 450 Fahrenheit, but they'll do it. And uh, then, you know, what we're all looking forward to, of course, is those first images and what they mean, right? Looking back at the very beginning of time. Yeah. That's what's, you know, just so yeah. exciting. So let, tell me about that. We got a, we got a few minutes left. So this telescope, when it goes online in about five or six months... Is that right, roughly? Yeah, about five. Uh, we'll start yeah. sending images back. Um, is it like the Hubble where different scientists kind of have to, you know, jostle to get time on oh, it yeah. and then aim it? And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and time is precious. And, you know, it's interesting, by the way, the Hubble over its life, if you adjust the money, cost almost as much as this. Yeah. So, But we got to look at, let's not knock the, the Hubble. We got no. a lot of a lot of stuff out of the Hubble. Oh, um, and the public relations value to NASA yeah, with Hubble. Yeah. I mean, that's the gift that keeps giving, right? And they've got larger telescopes planned. I was doing some reading yesterday. They've got one called, I think it's pronounced Luvior. It's a large ultraviolet optical infrared surveyor. Uh, probably a 50-foot primary mirror. Wow. So twice as wide as this thing. So it's huge. It looks a lot like the web. And they're talking, you know, between 20, 25, 20, 35 but that would be pretty much, it would be able to do a lot of things. But one of the main purposes really is looking at exoplanets. And Webb will do that. But this, of course, would be much more sensitive. Right. Then I've got another one Exo, called Habex. Let's explain what an exoplanet is. Oh, sorry. Yeah. It's a planet around another star, another solar system. We want to see if we can look at the rocky planets. There's another telescope they're planning you know, called Habex, which would do that. It's amazing because we didn't even know there were, whether there were, other planets until the last 20 years. This is relatively yeah. new. Now we're starting to look for not only other planets and other systems, but other planets like the Earth. Right. So, you know, it's it's kind of easy to find the big ones because they actually affect the star they're orbiting. The Jupiters so of, measure, the, uh, of the yeah. world. Yeah. So if you measure the dimming or if you measure the motion of the star, you can, you can tell indirectly. But spotting the rocky ones is tough, and that's the next step. Wow. Rocky is if, good? Rocky's not Rocky gassy. Is good because yeah. No, Rocky is not a big ball of gas. Rocky, right. we think there might be water and there. organisms and yeah. more of us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah more so of that's us. what so you know, the next 10, 15 years is going to be really exciting in astrophysics. And if Starship gets going, as we discussed, I think last week, then you can start launching these telescopes without all this folding stuff. You know, you just jam it in there and go. You could make it out of lead if you wanted and set it up. Really? There, it's, there's so that powerful. they're that capacious? There's that much room? It's a 30 to 33 feet, I think. Oh, wow. So, you know, for a really big one, you'd still want to fold it, but you wouldn't need all these. Wouldn't have to be these, so, uh, so much origami yeah. involved. Yeah, You're, Exactly. There wouldn't have to be, you know, yeah. 400 folds. There'd yeah. be like three. Yeah. And you could have a crew out there to deploy it if you wanted. Very cool. It's, it, uh, you know, yeah. we wanted to get you on the show because it's time to start talking about space once again. And yeah. boy, I, I, I couldn't be happier uh, at the kinds of things we're talking about. Rod Pyle. Me neither. Thank you. Read the magazine at astraspace.nss.org. Thank you, Rod. Take care.